Popping Squad is your boy Jasamey and today we're gonna go through a quick crash course of the information that we got about Division 2. Now I'm pretty sure many of you guys have seen this um, little picture showing all the little benefits and all how everything works already but for the people who just haven't had a chance to see it or were kind of unclear about it we're gonna try to go through this real quick and uh, maybe as a division veteran I can explain it if it's a little bit too complicated. So. This obviously shows how you build your character um, leading into the division. Um, if you are a new division player, basically how the game is ran is you're gonna have your own personality as far as your gear. Um, depending on what you want, you build your character differently. So you have the option to change things, you have the option to try out things. You're not just stuck to one play style. Um, you kind of get to experiment um, based off of all the loot in the game and all the different perks and mods and all that stuff. So first things first, we'll start right here. It says build your character, perks. Perks are passive benefits that once unlocked are always active. Most perks have upgrades, which need to be unlocked in order. Perks affect item carry capacity, inventory stash, grenades, armor kits, but also crafting materials and resource items. They also award XP bonuses, bonus crafting materials from deconstructing, in-world detection boosts on containers and enemies, new bounty difficulties, and perks and their upgrades are unlocked at the quartermaster. So, long story short, uh, these are basically you're gonna be given these at the end of the game as far as like grinding uh, Everybody's going to have them at the end game So it's not like you have to choose in between which ones these are like your basic necessities um, As you level up your character. So just take them as like level up bonuses. That's like the best way I've always saw them as I played um, I always said okay, these are gonna come naturally by playing the game um, at some point You're gonna have enough to get them all so come the true part of the game, which is level 30, you're gonna have all these anyways, but make sure you get them in the order that you are uh, most comfortable with. So how they ran it in this one is you kind of get to choose it um, based off of the, the little coins, I guess you wanna call it, um, based off of what you came across in the game. Like let's say you had a problem with armor kits or something, just buy those first and kind of go in order from what you need. So by the time you're level 30, whatever else that you didn't need, you just buy with the rest of your coins. So putting that out there, you can see right here, just inventory one, two, and three. This is an example. Um, you can get up to 30 slots, something basic like that. So if you find yourself having like low inventory, um, you can kind of invest into that off rip and it kind of goes up as you play. So. We'll go right here. We'll just, we'll just kind of go in order. Player level. Reach level 30 by completing activities and missions in the world. Once agents reach max, le max level, gear will no longer have level requirements and instead display a gear score. So um, if you don't know what that is, and most of you do, but once you pass level 30, it doesn't matter about the, the weapons like uh, level itself. It's going to be based off your gear score anyways. Everything's going to be pretty much like on a, like a standalone level um, that you pretty much are going to work with from that point. And that's when you hit level 30, which is technically end game. Player equipment, quality, higher quality tiers and levels allow the equipment to have more unique stats, higher values on its stats, and a wider variety of talents. Now, um, these are the ones, it's worn, standard, specialized, superior, high-end. So these four, the four top ones, are going to be where, what you get all the way up until level 30. So you're pretty much not gonna be touching high-end until you're level 30, so consider this like the end game uh, rarity, if you, if you didn't know. But these four are going to be dropped throughout 1 through 29. When you get to level 30, these all literally become useless to your level 30 character. So just putting that out there, I know some people are going to say, uh, some newer people have asked me, like, is there any difference if, if it's a level 30 superior or high end? There is a big difference because you get more talents and stuff. And you, you pretty much want to cut off these four when you get level 30. And that's what's going to be dropping anyway. So high end is the highest right now. In Division 1, we had... Um, Exotics as well, which are I don't think they added this for a reason exotics are gonna be a special one that you can put like right here And they're a little bit better than the high-end I don't know how different the exotics are gonna be in this game But there are going to be exotic weapons as you as you as many of you know I'm sorry. I'm over here stuttering as many of you know if you pre-ordered a certain edition you actually get an exotic uh, AK so you're gonna have one off um, rip so you're able to have those and just like in Division 1, um, ex I guess Exotic will kind of be over here because you, there's even low-level Exotic, so just to put that out there. So um, going into mods, equipment can be modified to further specialized behavior or stats. Weapon can equip attachments, magazines, muzzles, underbarrels. Okay, so basically this is saying uh, that you can mod your weapons. Uh, nothing too fancy here. The only difference if you play Division 1 and come into Division 2 is now there's drawbacks from it. So, for example, like you can have a scope that can give you 30% weapon damage, or I mean, it probably won't give you that much, but give you like 10% weapon damage or something, but it'll take away recoil, or it'll give you stability, but take away reload speed, or anything like that. So now they have special mod 
and and I like this system, kinda if it's balanced. In the beta, it was kind of harsh, but it's gonna make you have a, a preference now. Like let's say you get an, a, like a certain AR that you're able to control without needing mods on it. You can kind of spec into things that may may take a little stability away because you can still keep it. Or if you got a gun that's completely hard to um, maintain, you can you know get all stability and recoil and kind of work from there. So it, it kind of becomes a giant balancing game depending on your play style and your skill level with that weapon. Um, going into the next one, let's go to talents. Talents are powerful special effects that can further enhance or change one's play style and effectiveness. The most powerful talents only activate once agents fulfill their stated requirements. Now, for people who have been playing a game, this is actually something important, so pay attention. Now, the talents are no longer um, number-based like back in the day in Division 1 where you have like 5,000 electronics or stamina or whatever. Now, it's based off of these little icons that are coming on the gear, and you can either get this threshold or more or get this threshold or less depending on what it says. So um, you're going to have to kind of go off of based off of your, your gear and kind of follow the icons to kind of perfectly set this up depending on whatever build you want to come across. So it's it's no longer just handed to you. And in, in certain talents, like you see accurate, this is given to you no matter what. You don't have to worry about that. The only one that uh, is going to require are the ones that have like a cool, super cool ability. So you see killing a target within seven meters grants 50% weapon damage for five seconds. This is actually nuts. I Wow, that's actually nuts. Anyways, so certain things like this that are that strong are going to be based off of this requirement. So your gear is definitely going to play a role in that. And that's all the rest of your gear. So your chest piece can have an icon, uh, your, your mask, your knee pads, all that stuff is going to go into this requirement to unlock this. I'll often call it like a super talent in this case. And this is on your weapon. So just look out for that. Going down to skills. Skill platforms. There are eight skill platforms that unlock by completing skill unlock missions. Pulse, Drone, Chem Launcher, Hive, Secret Mind, Turret, Firefly, and Shield. So Pulse, it, it shows the enemies. It's basically like a baby wall hack. You can kind of see through the map and see your enemies. The Drone has different ones. It's a little robot that follows you. The Chem Launcher shoots um, CC abilities. The Hive, you, you kind of, you could either choose to put like a healing one, put it on the floor, it can break armor. Seeker Mind speaks for itself. It's a little ball that goes and chases down everybody. A turret you can put on the floor. It can shoot at enemies. Firefly, I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure about the Firefly and the shields, obvious. Um, Agent can have two skills equipped at the same time, increasing their options for how to approach the combat situation. So you get to choose two out of these, and these have variants within it. So you can have, um, for example, you have a turret, but there's also a turret that snipes, a turret that does this or whatever. So you can have different variants, and you can have two of those. So just put that out there. As you can see right here, skill variants, they have each skill platform has three to four variants featuring different characteristics now the reason they put four is because when you become a specialist which is you get at level 30 where you choose your specialist weapon you can see right here grenade launcher that she has you get special abilities that go on certain skills so that's just something to note if you like a certain skill um and you find out someone's running it um it could be their specialist skill so certain skills you can't share across other specialists so you're gonna kind of have to pick and choose depending on that skill mods now this is actually kind of new for me so let me read this real quick skill mods are items found through loot dedicated on each of the skill platforms they enhance a certain kills skills characteristics like its range or damage skills okay so basically what this is saying so just like with weapons how you have a mod where you can enhance your weapon you can enhance your skills the only difference is i don't think that there's any drawback for these so basically whatever mod is going to be depending on what you want for that so um make sure you definitely invest into this because if you do love your skills, you can definitely make them OP. So this is something I'm definitely going to be focused on because I love skill builds, as many of you know. Okay, going into, we'll read this real quick, weapon slot. So you get two weapons. Uh, you get two primary weapons. So you can see she has, well, it doesn't show right here, but this is your third weapon. Consider this your third weapon, not including your pistol. Your pistol is your sidearm. You have two primaries, and then you have your major weapon, which is going to be your specialist weapon. But you do get two different weapons that you can use outside of your specialist, if you didn't know. Um, let's go to gear slots. So an agent has a total of six available gear slots, mask, backpack, vest, gloves, holster, and knee pads. Each gear piece comes with an armor stat, which is an indication of the amount of damage one can take before losing all armor. Once all armor is gone, the character is very vulnerable, which is very true. If you have not played the beta, if you lose your armor, you're pretty much a dead man, so make sure you keep that armor up at all times. Gear brands, equi equipping gear pieces belonging to the same brand unlock additional stats. So. For the people who wanted to know if there's gear sets, gear brands and brand sets are technically our baby version of gear sets right now, but there is another level of gear sets 
um, that we'll talk about that later as we get more information. I know one's called Patriot, but this is brand sets, um, and this is basically like the Hexo meta. Just imagine that. Just imagine raw buffs that you can just mix and match. So that, that's kind of as simple as I can make it. Each brand item increases the number of brand stats active up to a maximum of three. So you can see each brand set gives you three buffs and depending if you're wearing one, two, or three, you unlock these talents. So if, if you like the third one, you have to have three pieces on in order to unlock that. So just, just to note that. Um, agents have a wide set of brand choices and combinations to find their preferred play style. So you can definitely find a bunch of these, mix them up so you can have like one of this or have one and two and then have one of another and you kind of go all crazy with it. So. And here we are, it says prepare for end game, recalibration. So um, I pretty much don't even have to explain this to the people who have um, played Division, but at the same time I do because now, even though recalibration is the same concept where you're basically min-maxing depending on your preference, the way to do it is different. So once agents get closer to the end game, recalibration will be made available. This feature allows agents to further customize their equipment by replacing their attached stats and talents and increasing their gear score to a certain limit. At the recalibration bench, agents can, by paying some credits and materials, choose or change a stat or a talent on an item they want to upgrade, exchanging it, now that, and pay attention, exchanging it with a stat from an item in their inventory. The item, the wait, the item the stat is transferred is, okay, the item the stat is transferred from is destroyed at the recalibration. So, long story short, let's say you get this paratrooper SSVD and you also got this M44. You don't like the SVD, but you like Allegro. Allegro is a talent on it, okay? But your M44 came with jazz hands. You don't really want jazz hands. What you'll do is you'll keep, make sure you keep the weapon. Like if you like, if you see a talent you really, really like, keep the weapon, regardless of what it is, keep the weapon. And then you're going to go to the recalibration and you're going to transfer the talent that is on this weapon that you don't want onto the weapon that you do want and in turn is going to destroy this old weapon. So imagine you're just stripping this and this disappear. That's why it has a little trash can. So if you have a God roll, um, let's say you have an M44 and you found a God roll, I don't know, like a, I don't know, some kind of AR or whatever. I, I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure if it's only depending on the same one or not, depending on, obviously depending on the talent, but if you do like it, make sure that you keep it, keep it, keep it. Because a lot of people are gonna be trashing gear unnecessary, I don't like this gun. Pay attention to the talent first. If you like a talent, then you can kind of roll it onto here and boom, you can start your recalibration thing. So here it is. For the stat talent transfer to take place, the two stats and talents need to be from the same family. Okay, so another thing. Okay, obviously I'm, I'm glad I read that. If it has to be the same family. So if it's a, a if it's an offensive talent, then it's gonna go if it's defensive talent or health talent, it has to be the same one in order to transfer. Um, so you can just make sure you keep that in mind um, depending on how you're rolling. Agents can only recalibrate one stat or talent per item, and but this can be switched out indefinitely. So what they're saying is once you do this, once you choose this talent, you cannot change any other talent on the weapon. And also in turn, which you can still do, is you can find 20 different items and keep switching this one talent. You can always replace it depending on your build and depending on your preference after that. So super important. I, you have to pay attention to this because when you come to game and you're building your true build, this is going to be one of your most go sought after things in the game. I promise you as a Division One player, we spent, I don't know, I probably spent at least 40 hours of game time at the recalibration station. So I'm putting that out there. Specialization. So these are um, the grenade launcher, the sniper, and the crossbow. Um, upon reaching the end game, which is level 30, agent unlocks specialization, sharpshooter, survivalist, and demolitionist. Sharpshooter, obviously a sniper, survivalist. It's the crossbow, demolitionist is the grenade launcher. Agents can switch between unlocked specializations with no restrictions by talking to the quartermaster at the base of operations. Each specialization comes with a signature weapon and a new signature weapon slot added to your already existing loadout. These weapons are powerful, but their ammo is rather scarce. Each specialization comes with an ability tree, which contains new skill variants, grenade types, and talents that fit the specialization and play style theme. So your grenades also change depending on your specialization. So uh, keep that in mind. You can unlock abilities and specialization tree with specialization points. These are rewarded from completing invaded missions, daily priority missions, priority network bounties, weekly projects, also field, pro field proficiency level up rewards and specialization points. So you not only are you building your character's gear, your weapons, your mind, you have a specialization tree that can level up, which gives you additional buffs and different changes to your play style, depending on how much of the activities you do. So keep that in mind. Gear score. After level 30, all gears and weapon 
power is represented by gear score in addition to quality. Agents overall loadout power is represented by an average gear score of all equipment that they have equipped. So um, to simplify this, basically the stronger your gear, the higher your gear score. And they're, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have a cap at some point and they're probably gonna raise that depending on what, what they bring out. So your gear score is going to be your fully maximized end game goal, right? The higher your gear score, that means the stronger your equipment is, which ultimately means your, your agent is stronger. So how to raise gear score. Agents can find higher gear score items by engaging in any, 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 any end game activity that rewards loot. Drops are based on their peak available. Anything in your inventory or stash, gear score, not current loadout power. Okay, so what they're saying is with this, let's say I have a gear score 348 pistol and armor set and everything. Anything that drops is going to be higher than this. So uh, I would assume at least a little bit higher so you kind of keep doing that. So you might get 350s and then you get all 350s and it goes 354 or whatever and it goes up from there. More difficult activities, for example, main mission, the bounties on higher difficulties will have a higher chances for gear score upgrades. So everything that drops is slowly incrementing up, which ultimately um, becomes the grind, right? It's gonna be getting your favorite gear in higher gear quality. So putting that out there, which is which is I'm excited for, because that, that's where the real grind begins. The end game is organized in world tiers. Each world tier corresponding gear score max, which represents a maximum gear score of the loot in that world tier. So please remember this. Once you start leveling up like really, really high with your gear score, do not forget to change your world tier because if you are a world, you, you can be, let's say, I don't know how it would happen, but let's say you're at 400 gear score and you were on world tier one, you will still only drop, gear, gear will be weak. The gear will be trash if it's in world tier one. So you wanna be at world tier four to get the maximum gear score items, if which is, it says, 375 you have to have at least a stronghold so there's a requirement to be there and then the fifth will come out later which is the true end game world tier so keep that in mind in order to advance world tiers agents have to beat the world tier challenge two invaded main missions and an invaded stronghold the stronghold has a gear score requirement this means one's loadout power needs to be at least the require amount in order to attempt the stronghold challenge so basically um let's say you're in world tier one and you're trying to get to world tier two um, you're gonna have to get a certain amount and then you have to beat the missions that push you into the next one So it's kind of like loot 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 get to requirement and you can either keep going higher if, you, if the mission's too hard go for the next mission beat the next mission into the world tier or you lose Go back and keep grinding until you're able to beat the next threshold to get into the next world tier So that's cool because it, it, it really tests if you're ready for the next world tier and I'm pretty sure that they're gonna have the scaling depending on that Successfully completing the stronghold challenge will automatically advance agents into the next world tier So as soon as you beat it boom, you're gonna be popped into the next one uh, Let's go to exotics exotics are unique. So this is what I was talking about right here it, it, When I mentioned that there's another rarity for the people who didn't know it's gonna be exotics. so Exotics are unique weapons and gear So there is going to be weapons and gear with their own lore looks and talents only one exotic weapon and gear item can be equipped at a time a total of two which is a huge change and for the destiny people i'm pretty sure this is like normal for you guys for us this is different because we used to have um any exotic we want on right you can have a full exotic set pretty much if you wanted to now you can only have one in one which is one weapon one gear piece so this is going to open up a lot of different exotic builds because you're going to have to only choose two which could change your play style completely so um getting into it, acquiring exotics will require completing specific tasks progressively discovered by agents as they take back washington dc exotics can be upgraded through crafting agents will need to purchase the upgrade blueprint for each exotic from vendors the blueprint requires exotic material which is obtained by de deconstructing any exotic item so the cool thing that's different from the old division is like there was like a shotgun and an AK that you got in the beginning of the game that was basically used. It was cool because they looked different and when, when it was out, it was cool to have, but it became useless at end game. Now you're able to kind of do the same thing just how you do with the recalibration where you sacrifice an item to make a better one. With exotics, you can, you can craft better exotics of the ones you have by destroying your old one. So that's kind of cool. That's a, that's gonna open up all the exotics in the game to end game, which is really really dope. Uh, which I mean, it's exciting because you get that that AK, um, that exotic AK. If you acquire, if you buy, um, I don't know which one it is, but if you buy one of the versions, you're gonna have an AK that can be pretty much take throughout the whole game if you you know you keep up with it. So putting that out there, gear sets. Here we go. So, like I said, brand sets and gear sets are different. 
Gear sets are comprised of, uh, comprised of six unique gear pieces, which when equipped unlock a special and very powerful, okay? Make sure you put emphasis on that. Very powerful five and six piece talents. Um, these have a different quality color compared to normal items. I'm not sure if they're, they're gonna be like the dark green again or not. Um, and do not adhere to the same quality rules, nor do they have the gear brand. Gear sets are found in loot and rewards, and just like any other gear and weapon items, playing specific activities will guarantee a random gear set reward. The first gear sets will be added shortly after launch of the Division 2. So on the 12th and the 15th, you're not going to be able to get gear sets. So if you go crazy and you go through the whole game and you get there and you're looking for your uh, gear set, you're not going to have it. That's, at, that's post launch. So um, just focus on optimizing your character so when they come, you're all ready. Um, and going to crafting. Crafting requires two main components, blueprints and materials. Agents discover blueprints through a multitude of activities, such as playing weekly projects, defeating control points, or purchasing directly from vendors. Scavenging is a great source for crafting materials, but so are control points, living world activities, uh, projects, and boss loot. Deconstructing undesired equipment is also an effective way to acquire base materials. I'm sorry, guys, I'm freestyling this. Uh, I'm not scripting or anything, obviously, so I'm gonna like, stutter every now and then. But anyways, crafting. So crafting is going to be uh, super important because you're not, if you played the beta, you saw that crafting uh, extended mags and, and crafting certain gear is, is going to be the fastest way for you to guarantee exactly what you want based off of the role. So um, you're gonna have to go throughout the game, get your materials, get all the items that you don't want. Remember, that don't have a good talent, right? Let's say it's a talent you do not want on any other gun. You can deconstruct those to get materials to create a brand new weapon or a brand new uh, mask or backpack or whatever gear set or not gear set, but any loadout item that you have. So just putting that out there. So yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, as far as information, they did a phenomenal job giving us this. If, if you did not see this, I will drop the link. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't have to drop a link. Go on my community page and I actually posted this with the link for you to read it, go over it yourself if I didn't cover anything. Um, so as far as a great overview, um, this is definitely something that you need to study. If you are a new player, uh, make sure that you pay attention to all these things because little things like this recalibration thing, if you miss uh, and don't pay attention to, you, you, you're literally cheating yourself out of a, a better loadout. So that's pretty much it. I love y'all, appreciate y'all. Hopefully I helped this um, get spread a little bit more for people who did not know or did not have time to look or, or needed a brief explanation. I know it's not short, but I had to make sure I, I explain it for any newcomers that are coming to the Division Two family. So I love y'all. Launch is almost on its way. Um, I did my for farewell Division One video and it's super sad. Go check that out. And uh, yeah, so I'll see y'all in Washington, D.C. I love y'all. Your boy is out.